What is going on, guys? This is D with Near Fall Gaming. Another episode of SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 General Manager Mode is here in front of you. We've got a big episode, so we are not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. I'm kind of liking the little flow of not doing the recap from the previous week. And, you know, we'll make little mentions of, of certain things in there, but we're just focusing week by week let's get right into the preview for our september 20th edition of smackdown match number one is going to be chavo guerrero versus kenny dykstra these two have faced off before this one will determine who's the number one contender for sabu's championship and we'll see how this goes and we're not we're not exactly sure however we do know that the winner of this match will face Sabu next whenever the Cruiserweight Championship is defended. Moving on to match number two, we've got Marcus Corvon and Elijah Burke. Now this is this is might be the match with the most story behind it for the night. Now, obviously, if you've been watching this series, you know what's going on between Marcus Corvon and Elijah Burke. You know the the former. The former friends have turned into enemies, and Elijah Burke was actually working with Kenny Dykstra. However, you'll see at the beginning, the opening segment of this show, Elijah Burke and Kenny Dykstra are having an argument because of the way that last week's handicap match uh, went. It didn't go the way that they wanted it to. In kayfabe, Marcus Corvon picks up the, in the victory against Elijah Burke and Kenny Dykstra in a two-on-one. And they were not happy with each other. Basically, Elijah Burke said, "You know, you didn't, you didn't, we didn't, you didn't handle your business. You didn't do what you were supposed to. And I'm not going to help you out tonight for your match." Basically, just saying like they making it clear that they had the deal that you know Kenny Dykstra helped Elijah Burke with Corvon, and then Elijah Burke might help Kenny Dykstra uh, maybe with Cruiserweight Championship, something like that, or with Chavo Guerrero, whoever, whatever it may be. Um, so Kenny Dykstra gets no assistance and Elijah Burke gets no assistance. And so the general manager, you know, he, he hears Kenny Dykstra and Elijah Burke arguing and he comes up and says, you know, Elijah, it's, it, I've been, I've been trying to find you, man. It's funny that you said you and Marcus Corbon had one more match and some unfinished business because you were absolutely right. However, it wasn't in the way that you were thinking. It was not in a handicap match. It is going to be solved tonight in a Falls Count Anywhere match. So you better get ready because it's going to be after Kenny's match. And that's the way this match was announced. It was announced uh, tonight, basically. And it's going it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a, a very emotional f match uh, between the two, kind of like the, the blow-off. Obviously, they had a match at SummerSlam. However, this one is that Falls Count Anywhere, so we expect to see some good shit. <laughs> match number three is the United States Championship. And what we are seeing here is Mr. Kennedy has challenged William Regal. You know, King Booker was not to be seen. And Finley was basically relaying a message for Booker. And William Regal was just like, Finley, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, look at yourself. It's been two weeks since I, I left Book and I'm the United States champion. I've done so much for myself. You should, you know, maybe really do something for yourself instead of just always listening to him. Finley's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, King Booker's gonna be at your ass, but he's not here right now. He's not here this week. Uh, yada, yada, yada. And then Kennedy comes through the back. This is probably like between match number one and match number two. Kennedy comes through the back and he challenges William Regal. William Regal, the baby face that he is, he is a fighting champion and he accepts the United States Championship match. And so here we are having this match. Match number four is Kane versus Snitsky, and it's just basically an exhibition match. Kane is, just needs to get some, some anger out against a fellow large, bald man, and Snitsky is just the large, bald man to do the job. Now, this is also in relation, Kane needs to get some frustration out to the, because of the main event. Edge is in that main event. He 
Kane and the general manager made it abundantly, abundantly clear that Kane cannot interfere in Edge's match tonight. And so, for that reason, I'm going to have you take on Edge in, or I'm going to have you take on Snitsky in just some exhibition work so you can, you know, blow off some steam, get your mind off it, because I can't have you fucking up my main event. And Kane, you know, he, he, he signed a contract. So, <laughs> as menacing as he is, he signed a contract, so he's got he's got to listen to his boss. <laughs> Moving on to our main event, Rey Mysterio versus Edge in a hardcore match, and it is billed as a hardcore match on the graphic. But I'm, I I just think it's funny because in the gameplay, it's actually a TLC match because we've got some other hardcore matches uh, booked in the show, and we don't want to be too redundant with the hardcore matches have too many in the same match card so it's funny that it's an actual hardcore match in kayfabe but we're booking as tlc practically the same fucking thing though honestly if you think about it because of the fact that um like it's just a pinfall um and there are weapons that start outside the ring it's just better weapons you get a, a ladder and a table instead of a fucking sledgehammer and you still get the chair (laughs) <laughs> so there's that so that is it for the preview of this edition of smackdown we're gonna get right into it we're locking it in and we're gonna go ahead and get started here and match number one we got chavo guerrero versus kenny we're gonna simulate it and that is the victory that we wanted first blood just gives us a little extra rub and chavo picks up the victory it's not what we wanted because that's what happened in the kayfabe because that's not exactly what happened in the kayfabe. What happened in the kayfabe is a double countout. So, n- there's no decisive winner. It's, there's no single one man who gets his hand raised at the end. And basically, you know, let's just say uh, uh, Chavo does like some kind of taupe move and uh, takes out Kenny, but also takes out himself. And, you know, it's, it's a huge move that the crowd's like, holy shit, holy shit. Um, but ultimately, the ref counts to 10. It's a double count out. Sabu obviously isn't going to not have a number one contender. So, basically, you guessed it. The two of them will be considered um, eligible for the next Cruiserweight Championship match. Will they face it? Will it be a triple threat? Who knows? Or will they each get a title shot? Uh, we'll keep that from you. But um, otherwise, that is how that match goes. We're moving on to match number two which is the Falls Count Anywhere match between Marcus Corvon and Elijah Burke. And you see it's billed as a hardcore match in the game, so we're going to go ahead and just play it. And we're playing as Marcus Corvon once again up against Elijah Burke. Here comes that man. Sometimes guys just got the entrance. You know, sometimes you just got to watch it. Sometimes you just got to let it play it out. Gregory Helms is one of those guys. Marcus Corvon is one of those guys. Elijah Burke is not one of those guys. We're going to go ahead and move on. (laughs) All right, all right. And Elijah Burke is is a, a, a finicky some bitch, man. I when he, when whenever I am going up against Elijah Burke, it gives me issues. I've figured out ways to beat him, but uh, it's not always smooth sailing necessarily. Oh, okay. Big ass to you. There we go. Fire ass. Another one. There we go. And then we're gonna bop, bop, bop. Oh, no. Nope. Nope. 
Damn, Elijah. Damn. Whew. Okay. Whew. Got out of that one. Got out of dodge there. Oh, can I do it again? Oh, I do. There, nice spear. Nice spear, nice spear. Okay. God, Mark Scorpion. I, I really should change your moveset, brother. Your finisher just sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. But... Oh, Elijah, you think you... Think you... Mm -mm. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna, you're just going to take another spear, bro. You're just going to take another spear. How does that make you feel? I'm going to hit you with the... Ooh, wop. Bop. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> okay, let's take a Spanish part or his apartment. Spanish announce table getting taken apart. Nope, I don't think. I don't know if he's the diving type. <clears throat> I know he's one hell of an athlete, but I don't know if he's the diving type. He probably could, honestly, but I mean. Not to say that other big big men that have done it aren't great athletes, but I mean there are bigger men that are probably less athletic that have done it. Come on, boy. Oh, okay. What's up, Elijah? Elijah? Elijah Burke. Okay, let's go, brother. What is Elijah Burke up to these days? Does anyone comment in comment in the comments if, if you know what Elijah Burke is up to these days? Oh, the worst submission system ever. Gotta love it. You gotta love it. Nice, big knee. Big knee. I'm just gonna drag your ass over here, brother. Okay, couldn't drag it very far. Damn, every time, every time you try to do something specific is when the AI just r really starts to resist. Okay, golly, you just gotta love that STO, man. You gotta love it. Okay, let's go, Corvon. Let's go, brother. It's, uh, it's symbolic because, you know, Elijah Burke let this happen to you at the Great American Bash, and now you're doing it to him in a false Count Anywhere match, and we're gonna pick up the, the Uno and the Dose. And the Trisky. You can't, you just now got to see the angle, but before you couldn't see it because there was a chair in the way. However, I promise you that it happened. Marcus Corvon defeats Elijah Burke. Let's go, Alpha Male. Alright. This gets a nice win to solidify. You know everything <clears throat> that had happened. Obviously, he got the win at SummerSlam. Elijah Burke wasn't just gonna let that happen. You know, he had to give some kind of uh, blowback. However, it just really solidifies the strength of Marcus Corvon, makes him look strong, shows that he is not just a tag team competitor anymore, and he is a force to be reckoned with for the next singles division that he decides to go into. You know. Um, moving on, United States Championship, a first blood match. Huh. Okay, yeah, I forgot. Um, and it is a United States Championship match, so of course we're going to be playing it. And we're going to be playing as Mr. Kennedy. Good shit. Good shit, Kennedy. And the opponent. Willie Riggs with the United States Championship belt. You gotta love it. 
Yeah, if I had the European Championship belt, I would have had him change it to the European Championship for an hour long. I don't know if that's like super disrespectful because the United States Championship is all prestigious. However, like, is the WWE United States Championship that got brought back in like 2004 is that truly prestigious, or is it just like the take on the WCW, you know, things that happened in the past? That that championship, you know, I'm open for discussion. But regardless, boy, that looks good on William Regal. Golly, I love it. I love it. All right, moving on. And quite honestly, it's it's really oh, jeez, <clears throat> I thought I was William Regal for half a second. It's really disappointing that I'm gonna have to take it from him. And you be, you bet your ass we're going for it. We're gonna. We're going to strip William Regal of his, his pride right now. He's going to be a reigning champion of one week. And that's not exactly uh, respectful to him. He deserves a lot better, but that's the way it goes right now. And Kennedy, you know, it's, it's Kennedy's time. We're only doing this series for, for one year. And William Regal, he, he might come back. He might come back into this into this championship picture, but for right now, boom skis. Uh, he is going to just get the championship for one week. Mr. Kennedy will then be the champion, and I just wanted to make sure that William Regal got his due as a singles champion. You know, he's not going to be a world champion. Um, <clears throat> he could have been a world champion um, back in the day. But that's another conversation. A totally different conversation. Let's go, boy. Come on. Get I like the contrast of the red tights versus the blue tights. Um, naturally, you know, Kendi. Um, he's got the blue tights, so I kind of want to give him the nod already. Come on, Willie Riggs. It ain't going to be much longer, brother. There we go. Look at that. Manifestation in place. And there it is. Golly, the same animation every single time on the first blood matches. It's whatever. But Kennedy is now your United States Championship. Or United States Champion, excuse me. There we go. That boy. Large and in charge. I see you, brethren. William Regal looking all kinds of fucked up. And Kennedy, of course, has Snitsky out there with him. You can't see it in the gameplay, because the gameplay um, wouldn't let you see a manager anyway. It's a first blood match, so I can't put a manager out there. However, if I could, uh, there'd be no visual representation of said manager. <laughs> so. But... The third United States, we've had, we went from one United States champion all the series, and then in the matter of two weeks, we went from one to three. So, uh, that's, that's the way she goes though sometimes. Match number four, parking lot brawl here in the, in the gameplay, just to, you know, parking lot brawls always get good ratings. Snitsky, not the highest, he's like my lowest rated guy actually in popularity, but wow, not the, not the, uh, outcome that I wanted. Not the outcome I expected. Doesn't make the biggest difference because Kane is not in a title picture at the moment anyway. But, you know, that's still just kind of like, what the fuck. However, um, not what happens in the kayfabe because it's a singles match anyway. Not a, not a parking lot brawl. So Kane picks up the victory against Snitsky. Just pretend your brain sees something different. <laughs> Moving on to the main event. We've got the TLC match, which is really just a hardcore match. And we're going to play it. We're just going to bust this bad boy out. We just want to... We're getting closer to the pay-per-view, so we want to shore up our our power rankings. We don't want to have to go through the same thing that we did with uh, the Great American Bash, where we had to do an exhibition main event because Mr. Kennedy fell out of the top five. <laughs> And so we're just going to help our boy Rey Mysterio out. He's the number one contender, so we want to make sure he stays that way. From San Diego, California, weighing 165 pounds. Pizza Jam. And the opponent, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing 241 pounds. And 
here he comes. And remember, Edge just getting a little bit more and more unhinged every time we see him. Ever since he lost his World Heavyweight title, he's just, he's just not the same. Let's go, big dog. Let's go. Okay. Shit. <laughs> well, then. Getting the table out right away. Edge, we just went through this not too long ago, brother. I believe uh, it was uh, an, an evening called Summer Slam where Bobby Lashley took your ass to school and gave you per the proverbial red behind. Oh shit, I thought that crossbody was going over the rope for sure. I was wrong. It, it, it didn't go over the rope, anywhere near the, over the rope. Boom! Edge, you really fucked up by bringing all these weapons in here for me, my man. You're just making it easier for me. I'm just I'm just in here to take care of business. I'm not here to put on a, a, a barn buster or a classic here on SmackDown that you may be accustomed to on said SmackDown. These are two of the SmackDown six anyway. But <clears throat> we're just here, like I said, to pick to take care of business. We're on our third match of the episode. Um, we're, we've been doing a better job of keeping the episode shorter, so uh, hopefully the the viewing experience has been better because that's really the main reason that we the, we go for. We just want to make it um, as entertaining as possible without taking up too much as of your time here. Is that's the goal pretty much, uh, so you can enjoy the stories that that are being told and also uh, have enough relevant gameplay to not just make it like a, a screenshot channel <laughs> type thing. Um, but, uh, anyway, we're hitting Edge with another 6-1-9. Let's go. This might wrap it up. This might wrap it up. And the three-ski. Let's go, brother. Let's go. In and out. Just like that. We ain't playing around anymore. Now we got used to this legendary difficulty, man. Here's your winner. My dog, Ray Mysterio. Let's go. All right. Number one contender heading into No Mercy. And we'll see if he can keep that momentum rolling and if he can pull it off against Big Belt Bobby. Right, September 21st, Unforgiven. Time to get just absolutely dick down on the ratings again, but we're going to recover. Keep helping out our boy Johnny Nitro, though. Big success, as it should have been. Should be every week. Undertaker probably defending the WWE Championship once again. No different from a Raw, really, just a different stage. <laughs> If I had to guess. Four and a half star rating for the show. Okay. Let's check out what they did for Unforgiven. Nice half star last man standing match. A handicap match. Kali and Michelle versus Ashley. I don't know if Michelle is necessary there. I think Kali is will suffice on his own. <laughs> if, we're, if we're being honest, uh, Batista and Sandman, uh, or Batista loses to Candice Michelle. Uh, it seems that Molina has turned her back on Batista. Elimination Chamber. Okay, uh, that makes sense. It's only a four. Explain to me how they get a four and a half fucking star. Is it because they automatically are raw and they have an elimination chamber? Because otherwise. It, this this elimination chamber wasn't even for the United, the WWE Championship. Now that I'm realizing it, 
in the game. It probably can't be for the WWE Championship because unless you have a tag team in the top five or your champion is outside of the top five because there's six fucking guys in the match. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it is what it is. And now that I see that match card for Unforgiven, I, I instantly realized that No Mercy probably has some kind of built-in stipulation. I bet you it's like some uh, bur Buried Alive match. Um, and... I'm going to have to do some kind of exhibition thing anyway, so fuck it. Uh, Johnny Nitro up to a 90. Kenny Dexter 92. Golly, these numbers are so high, brother. 82, Regal 83. Poor man. Poor Regal. I feel for the boy. Check out our rival. Okay. We got to sign Finley. Okay, Edge. We signed Finley last week. Okay. 617. We're going to sign Edge for the next three weeks. Or three months. There we go. Uh, saved up some shmoneys. And then we can sign one of these three guys. 89, 87. So Matt Hardy would be the cheapest at this time. We're going to sign Matt Hardy. Make sure we have enough money to put on a show this week. Current champions, Bobby Lashley, Mr. Kennedy. Sabu and the Hardy Boys. That's not a bad looking lineup, honestly. Sabu, very unconventional at the Cruiserweight Championship spot. Like, that just looks weird. But, uh, you know, we get used to it. WWE. We already went to WWE.com. What are we doing? Um, Power of 25. Carlito still the ECW champion. Randy Orton still getting dragged down by Mickey. He'll never be champion that way. Poor fella. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. All right. Ray Mysterio number two. Kennedy number three. Kane, Edge, Booker. Went from 14 back up to six. Good for him. He shouldn't be at 14. So. Chavo Guerrero got back into the t top 15. That's what I need. I needed that, actually. I really, really like that for Chavo Guerrero. Moving on. Um, we're going to try... We're going to try a little something, something. I don't know if it's going to work. But we're going to try it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Johnny Nitro, you're about to take ECW by storm, my brother. He's currently the ECW champion. That's the only... We got it, though. Um, we just got Carlito, baby. Let's go. Big moves deeper into the series, shaking up the roster. We're doing real general manager things. We are general managing to the fullest extent right now. We just made a huge move to acquire Carlito. He's only an 87 popularity, so we can instantly throw him into doing some shit. He does instantly go on to that two-week um, little thing. However, that is big, man. That is big. I can appreciate that so much. So, <clears throat> Carlito is now a member of SmackDown. I like that. I apologize for clearing my throat so much. I will I will go back through and just cut it out as I can if it doesn't sound too choppy. But um, I've just been talking for a while. I haven't drank water. Um, I, I don't know why. It's just sitting just arms reach out of me. Um, but I just need to <laughs> help a brother out. There we go. Okay. Carlito's now a 92. We do not want to quit, especially without saving. We got a Thursday. So what else should we do, fellas? What else should we do? Pay-per-view commercial. Nice. No mercy. There we go. We're going to hype that bitch up. We're going to hype the shit out of it, actually. So, 
that puts us to Friday. So now that means that we will be seeing you guys in the next video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, leave some feedback down below. It's all appreciated. Stay tuned. We'll be back at you soon.